What if I told you that you can be Spider-Man for a day? Would you take a shot at it? Of course you would. And in Spider-Man Miles Morales, it's never been more of a blast to do just that. Swinging through the streets of New York City has never looked so good or been this much fun. Web swinging from the top of skyscrapers only to plummet down to the bustling streets below. Catching yourself just before impact, as citizens call out and all. Even ducking down, making sure they don't get hit. It's awesome every time. Saving the city's population from gangsters and catastrophes. Beating guys senseless with insane combos is a spectacle that only Spider-Man can do. Forging bonds with friends and family. All staples of the amazing Spider-Man are jam-packed into this obscenely entertaining tale that is absolutely gorgeous. This game came out at the end of 2020 as an exclusive to PS5 and even now in 2023, it holds up extremely well and is still one of the best looking games available today full stop. Insomniac really outdid themselves and the attention to detail in every nook and cranny is mind-blowing. If you can see it, you can climb it, perch on it, swing from it, and reach it. I can't believe it took me this long to finally play this game and now that I have, I don't want to stop anytime soon. It definitely has that addicting quality. So Miles Morales is a new Spider-Man who lives in the same timeline and dimension as Peter Parker, the iconic OG original. Miles is bitten by a radioactive spider in a similar vein to Peter, essentially creating a carbon copy, although he does have extra abilities that Pete doesn't. Miles is a teenage high schooler, which makes him somewhat naive and optimistic almost to a fault, but he is a genuinely good-hearted kid who truly wants to help people in need and protect his neighborhood and city from danger. Also like Peter, the patriarch of his family is no longer in the picture, so he lives alone with his mother and relies heavily on his best friends, Ginky and Finn, as well as his uncle Aaron to create a network of loved ones whom he can rely on. There is a surprisingly solid narrative built around Miles' relationships, as the voice acting and motion capture do a fantastic job of capturing raw motion and creating a sense of fragility in the characters. He fears for their safety, and you can feel Miles' sensitivity when it comes to their well-being and decision-making. Miles is essentially filling in for Peter Parker as he has shown the ropes of using his powers in handling violent offenders. Before Peter heads out of the country, which leaves Miles as the only Spider-Man in New York City. So these are huge shoes to fill, and you can feel the hesitation and uncertainty from Miles as he grapples with the idea of protecting the largest city in the U.S. from danger. Ultimately. Peter leaves, and Miles is left to create his own legacy as the other Spider-Man. Of course, because people see him that way, he's like off-brand Spider-Man in a lot of people's eyes. And he has to prove that he's worthy of carrying that mantle. He must also prove to those he loves and those who doubt him that he belongs. Miles' story is one of great development. Feelings of confidence are followed by feelings of doubt. Feelings of love are often followed by feelings of anger and disappointment. Miles is challenged way more than just physically, as his mental state is always just going through it. He must overcome nearly insurmountable and ever-changing obstacles that stretch him to the point of breaking. The character building and hero's journey here is amazingly well done. So right away, when you turn this game on and start it up, you can see the fidelity in every nook and cranny of the characters and environments. It's still impressive after dozens of hours playing to perch on top of a building and just watch ships sail by or the never-ending lines of traffic inch their way along the streets. Pedestrians line the sidewalks, rooftops, cafes, and parks going about their day-to-day lives. There never really seems to be any cut corners or assets that get little to no attention as the robust scale of nearly anything that appears on the screen would make it really easy to see a lot of the flaws. Because when everything looks good, it's really easy to notice the things that don't. There's also so much happening at once that you feel like the city is definitely alive and you can spend hours and hours just exploring alone. One of the major pros of this game is just how good it looks. Uh, The cutscenes are just regular gameplay and there's no enhanced CGI needed at all. As a matter of fact, playing this game is like playing one giant cinematic cutscene and it's really, really impressive. Graphics aren't everything in a game, but when a game gets almost everything right, it makes it that much more of a spectacle. You'll see snow falling lightly, floating around with gusts of winds. Pigeons will scatter when you land on a rooftop. Planes and helicopters will randomly dot the sky. And people stop and take selfies with you and also wish you Merry Christmas. Rooftop signs get covered in snow. Trains clack by on the subway tracks. Look through any apartment window and you can see all the furnishings. 
Now, this is what makes an environment feel alive. This is how you build a game world, sandbox or otherwise. If you tell the player they're responsible for protecting the millions of civilians in New York City, they make it feel like a responsibility. Make us care. And that is exactly what Insomniac did. They compel us to feel needed because when you care about who's around you, it makes you want to protect them even more. And when you need to protect somebody, you're definitely going to need mad squabbles. Because when you're Spider-Man, I think we all know being Spider-Man is hard. Now, the combat is so much damn fun, and it's one of the major strengths of the game. You have access to multiple creative ways of dispatching enemies. Want to use stealth? You can turn invisible and sneak up on unaware goons, or you can just web them up to the wall you're perched on, take them out of the fight without anyone really noticing. Like the gun's blazing approach? Dive in head first and duke it out toe to toe, utilizing Miles' quick acrobatic and death defying moves. Or you can just approach it somewhere in the middle. The world is your oyster. Now, most encounters do revolve around engaging groups of enemies that can number in the 20s at the high end until all of them are incapacitated. Sometimes you'll occasionally have to, like, turn a generator off or access a panel, but for the most part, you just got to kick everybody's ass. Occasionally, you'll even have carjackings that require you to take enemies out and stop the car from hurting any pedestrians at the same time. Arms deals, store robberies, and terrorism are some of the flavors of side quests aside from the main storyline brawls, and you will also have, of course, the epic boss battles. The game gives you so much choice on how to handle combat. It stays fresh long after credits roll. The choreography of Miles is excellent as he dodges, flips, dashes, punches, and swings his way to the W. You also have finishers that take out low health enemies and vary in different animations, but each one shines in its execution. And one of my personal favorite tactics is just to web swing kick enemies off of buildings. It takes them out the fight nearly instantly, and it's really one of the quickest ways to end a battle. It also looks really awesome as people are falling because they're like reaching out to the building, trying to grab it, even though they're flying away. And you just kind of watch them plummet down to the earth. And it's damn, it's brutal. Miles is capable of using venom abilities as well, which is a form of bioelectricity that he can generate to shock enemies unconscious. These moves can be chained together with other finishers or also other venom abilities. So when you start daisy chaining them together, it's super kick ass. You could become a composer of acrobatic brutality. Just putting dudes in a blender of pain. And Miles, it really is a little buzzsaw, man. Once he gets in there, everyone just starts flying. Everyone goes flying. There are RPG mechanics as well that evolve around gaining skill points from, of course, defeating enemies or completing missions to boost your combat abilities. Now, these allow for variations to moves, uh, increasing their potency. And there's three different skill trees available for use. And they include camouflage, venom, and combat, all skill enhancements. These are more like bonuses and enhancements than anything, as the movesets you use will truly determine what perks kick in based off the invested skill points. There are plenty of side activities as well, to include searching for audio logs from your Uncle Aaron, finding time capsules you hid away throughout the years, and then helping neighbors uh, through an app, a custom app, that they can reach out for help with. One of the major incentives to do the side quest is it does unlock unique uh, and custom costumes for Spider-Man suits, And the only way to get them is finishing chains for the side quest. So it's an incentive to do so. Now, the creativity and art direction on display here are top tier, S tier, especially the villain Rhino and the gang known as the Underground. The Underground have some sick ass character and weapon designs that are exceptionally creative. Pulse rifles, swords, shields, hammers, armor, all of which are metallic in nature and can morph to different sizes at will. Rhino is massive and is built like a Mack truck and he wears this enhanced cybernetic armor to boot so he just looks even more intimidating. They ditched that leatherette costume that was like made him look kind of like a real Rhino uh, and he looks way better now. He is extremely powerful and can ragdoll Spider-Man if you don't utilize tactics to defeat him. So as you grow in power you will run into advanced adversaries who are definitely more difficult to defeat and they definitely require strategy. You can't just bum rush them anymore. It just doesn't work. So it's really cool seeing that they, as you advance and get stronger, you will see stronger enemy types. And even into the end game, they'll kind of throw in new guys that you hadn't fought, which is nice. Speaking of the bosses, uh, the bosses you fight are very well designed and they're a lot of fun to fight, but I would have liked to see more of them. The game itself is around, for me, was around 12 hours. So I know it's kind of short, 
Uh, but there's just so many amazing Spider-Man villains that I felt it was kind of a letdown to not showcase them here, especially at the high levels this game is able to hit. That is about the only con that I can really say exists, is that the spectacle of bosses would be amazing if they were to have appeared for miles here. But oh well, there's always sequels, of course, so we have a sequel coming, so fingers crossed that we'll get a lot more bosses. I'm personally hoping for Venom and Carnage to make appearances, or one or the other, uh, as they're some of my favorite characters in comics. And for the verdict, I would say this game is a truly, truly a gem. And I highly recommend this to fans of Spider-Man, comic books, adventure, or action games, cinematic gameplay, and fast-paced stories. I mean, I greatly, greatly enjoyed my time playing and just wish there was a bit more to chew on here. But the meal you get is definitely worth every bite. Play this game. If you own a PS5, this game should be in your collection. It was a launch title. It's been out a while. I'm pretty sure you can get it on discount. It's totally worth full price. Whatever they sell it for, it's, it's worth it. I really don't see how anyone could be disappointed um, with this game. It's like playing a movie that you can control, and it's just super well done. It's extremely polished. And those load times are insane. And that's my verdict. Those are my thoughts. I want to thank everybody for watching and spending some time with me today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider liking and maybe subscribing for future content. I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace, Internet fam.